Hello everyone! Welcome back to this game! So, here we are at the end of the battle for Naraka. We have finally come up against the leader of the army, Gorgon Ghidra. And he's tough. He's already killed one of our mages and is about to kill Jersey because she was enraged by the killing of said mage. Um, speaking of mages, Paprika was just trying to cast that big ol' spell that would weaken him so that we could easily win, and, um, it didn't work. So, while your little friends are kept entertained, shall we get down to business, my dear? Try to make this last a little longer than two seconds, okay? Jersey's having completely lost herself now. I don't care how weak I am against a man like yourself. I will not lose to you! Let's go then, you adolescent brat. That is quite the insult there. Okay, it's Jersey by herself. She was really good whenever we were in the Bella's place. So... I don't think this will work out, but let's give it her a piss shot, okay? Okay, that is actually not so bad so far. Misses, even better. And she didn't have a chance. Yeah! Hmm, I must admit, although your magical powers were, of course, hardly capable of putting a scratch in me, you are stunningly nimble for someone of your most physically unfit stature. How did a wimpy little girl like yourself manage to dodge my scythe every time I swung it at you? Except for that last time. Uh, uh, Painfield gasp. I can't die. Still alive? That's quite impressive. No one has ever before been able to withstand even just one shot from my magic, much less an ordinary human. Well, I guess the stubborn wills that some of you Elvenians possess can at the very least delay an inevitable death for you at times. This still isn't the end of them. Hurry! We must get past them in order to save Jersey from getting herself killed. Okay, back into this battle. Don't suppose we were healed during that cutscene? Because I kind of used up stuff during it. Well, anyway, at the very least, we now know Uri is, in fact, strong with his fire against these guys. Dusk, on the other hand, is kind of not. Oh yeah, Uri also has that lightning sword that is supposedly good against them, except... Dusk was using lightning and it wasn't. I feel like we were misinformed. Do we have anything that would really help here? Well, actually, I don't know how much this will help, but let's try for it. And that's not going to be... Okay, the fact that I forgot to equip Lin's stuff is definitely going to be a handicap for me, I tell you what. Because he's supposed to have that bow that hits all enemies. And do a little Iron Fist. Okay, Dusk already has good agility. Physical attacks are not as much a threat as Light Arrow. Okay, I take that back. I apparently did equip Lin with a bow. It was the wrong one. Okay, time for some healing. Uh, 
Uh, these guys are almost down, so don't need to use up any HP to do that. It is interesting that the Soldiers of Darkness are using light arrows, by the way. Oh, gain a level during that. That's actually a good thing. Might actually help with Gorgon himself. Jersey! Oh, you managed to get the better of a few of my subordinates, hmm? You guys definitely can't be of Elvanian blood, then. Not even the most powerful among these Narakan knights have proven to be much of a match for us, which, when you think about it, proves just how pathetic and weak the creatures of this world are. Aside from you four, the Narakans were the only ones around here who were capable of putting up any resistance against us and his dark majesty. Well then, let's make a little deal, shall we? I know you four were under the desperate plea of the Holy City's rulers to fight me in their place, and Lord Zenobia seems to have taken a particular interest in having you all disposed of and out of his way. So, I tell you what. Gorgon roughly picks up a barely conscious jersey off of the ground and pushes her forward to the heroes, firmly holding both of her hands together behind her back in order to prevent her from breaking away. Fight me right this moment as the both of us had originally intended, and I will spare the life of this little angel of yours. Yeah, right. The second we come forward to do as you demand, you'll just kill her anyway. As if a man of the darkness could ever be trusted to keep his word. Gorgon grabs Jersey by the hair with his free hand, eliciting a pain-filled cry from her, and locks his other hand even more tightly around her wrists. Oh? Well, one thing you should know about me is that I am a man of my word, regardless of whether or not I have much respect for the ones I am making a promise to. I assure you that I will release her once I am through disposing of you. Besides, if you hadn't noticed, I am in a very good position to make the transition from holding this girl as my hostage to driving my claws into her back and out through her bosom, so I really don't think you have much of a choice in this matter but to obey me. Jersey. Ares is horrified. What an awful person! How could he threaten an innocent girl's life just like this just to get at us? Jersey cries out with the less of her strength. Please just forget about me and run away, everyone! Even if this monster had enough honor to let me go as he said he would, I am... Um, going to die anyway. We can't let her die, Ari. We probably won't survive fighting Gorgon, but let's face it, we're going to be screwed anyway if we try to make a break for it. I don't know what to do. It seems you are still having trouble arriving at a decision. I suppose I should speed things along by killing the rest of your little fangirls who tagged along with you and cut off all of your possible escape routes. Gasp! Sorry, Earthling children. Jersey coughs up blood along with her words. Lena! Everyone! This... This can't be. No. They couldn't all be... Lynn's despairing. There's nothing we can do. Gorgon says in a purely serious tone. You see, they're all gone now. With this girl I now hold captive as the only one of your friends still left alive. Are you intent on letting her perish as well? Because I will tell you right now, if one of you does not make a move towards me with this 
with sword in hand within the next three seconds, Jersey will have to attempt to fly to heaven without an intact heart. Is that understood? I... I can't... I can't take this anymore. I don't care what happens to us. We cannot allow anyone else to be sacrificed. There's no turning back now. Don't worry, Jersey. We'll save you. Gorgon throws Jersey aside. Good! Just what I wanted to hear. And here we go. Uh, okay. Hopefully, Uri Sword is going to be good against Gorgon here. Just in case, how about boosting that attack of yours? You still have that as a thing, right? Psych up? Yes. Let's use that a couple times. We took a little damage from that last fight, so... Let's heal up a little bit. While we're at it... How about some more buffing? And... Harrison... Considering how strong he is, let's hope that Hazy Moonbeam has some sort of effect. Well, I'm glad I'm starting out with a healing for everybody. Attack down, that's a good thing. And probably keep doing this for the moment. Oh! You know what? I don't think we're gonna win this fight. Um... Well, just out of curiosity, are you weak against lightning? Hopefully we get a chance to find out here. Um... Just attack him, I guess, and... Give him the boot. Kick that tail. Seventy damage, so... Yeah, the, the sword definitely would have done extra damage to him. Uh, too bad it has not helped. Tell you what, his magic's pretty weak. I'm surprised he actually is using magic. As often as he uses it, it almost gives a feeling that we could have a chance at this fight if all we did was keep ourselves healed and revive whenever he attacks somebody. But don't be fooled into that! You are in fact supposed to lose this fight. So says the guide, and so says prior experience. So we're just waiting for him to kill us at this point. Harrison slowly slumps to the ground. Yeah, we just uh, could not win, could we? Uh, why can't we win? Why? Jersey, uh, let her go, you jerk. Oh, I will, I will. I imagine that she'll be breathing her last soon enough anyway, as badly wounded as she is. I most certainly cannot imagine she has any chance of living with her lacking the strength to so much as lift her head up from the ground, and that is quite a bit of blood soaking into her pretty golden hair. Speaking of which, you four aren't looking much better. But, lucky for you, 
you're able to live a bit longer, as I am not allowed to actually slay you all here. It seems that the Dark Lord would very much like to meet you in person first, although I am not able to explain to you why that is. Uh, it's because the Dark Lord is actually one of their friends who has turned evil. We kind of found that out earlier. I'll just be taking you all away to my cozy little home within Macros Islands now. What? What is this? No! We can't leave her here to buy herself to die! Just thinks quickly. Miss Jersey, please run away from them! We won't let you die here! Why are we forced to abandon the people of Naraka now of all times? What will become of them? Huh. That was quite clever of that child, casting a healing spell on this girl to stop her from dying just before they were all swept away. I see now why they, they have been able to stand against us for so long. Especially with those soulless Emzu angels of theirs, they are formidable opponents. Jersey, still dismayed at her failure to protect any of her friends, remains on her hands and knees, tired and still bleeding heavily, not even looking up into the face of her conqueror. Take care of the rest, gentlemen. I will be taking my leave with this poor excuse of a battlefield now. Crush those so-called holy knights like the lowly insects that they are. Oh. And don't forget to take care not to accidentally trample the girl as you march on forward to destroy the rest of her Narakans. Have fun looting and pillaging the goddess's silly, uh, city now. So, what should we do with her? It doesn't look like she has the strength or the heart to put up any more resistance. I personally would like nothing more than to slay the little human witch here and now. But we must obey Master Gator's request. Just leave her where she is. Her wounds may be nearly cured, but she'll probably die from despair being left alone among the dead bodies of all her friends anyway. Ch how pathetic that girl is. As soon as the last of the ogres among Gorgon's troops had departed from the field where they had witnessed a desperate battle between their leader and our heroes take place, the soulless Emsu goddesses hastily ushered a listless and heartbroken Jersey Hartshorn to a safer place where she would be away from all of the fighting, and rightly so, considering her present state. Although not wanting to leave her by herself, the four ethereal sisters came to realize that in Jersey's state of silent distress, there was really nothing else they could do for the hapless girl, and so they turned their attentions on flying their wings westward to the Macros Islands to rescue their four earthling servants. Jersey was left alone to cry as many tears as she possessed, as she remained kneeling with head bowed low on the now deathly quiet field. Surrounded only by the corpses of her nine formerly former classmates and her own regrets.
The Knights of Naraka eventually succeeded in driving the hellish army led by Swanir away from the Yuzuki Plains. Thus, their beloved city and its good inhabitants were saved from destruction after all. But the losses incurred were far more devastating than even the Narakans had imagined. So maybe the Dark Lord had succeeded in his plans to leave a permanent and ugly scar on the Alvenians of that beautiful city in the end. Their hearts never were quite the same after that terrible day of bloodshed, and they fervently prayed that the darkness would be made to flee the world forever before another war like this one could ever come upon theirs or anyone else's heads ever again. What unsuspecting kingdom of innocent Elvenians must be forced to suffer the murderous wrath of evil next? <laughs>